All right, so there's lots of different ways to visualize um, from the ENCODE website. Um, and this is actually like an exciting thing that they've added that I didn't even really know that they were adding. Um, and I actually, now that I know that they've added it, I want them to do more with it. So um, if you click encodeproject.org and you go to ENCODE, you can see this beautiful, wonderful ENCODE website, which I hope that you've had some chance to look around. Um, it has so much information. It takes a little while to get to, to know it and get to use it, but it's, it's really um, amazing how much data there is. So if you go like encyclopedia or data, so let's go to data and um, you can do like an experiment search. So you click that and you see this huge amount of experiments. You can click experiment matrix and you see, I like this view because I think it's very pretty. So you see all this all these different experiments and all these different cell lines and organisms and tissues. All right, so you can be very excited about all this data and you can sort of scroll over or scroll down and you see, oh, oh wait, I just saw high C. So you click high C and you have all these high C experiments. Now, you can do it that way. You can also search in the search bar for high C, high dash C. Um, you can search for eras dash Aiden. I think that's what I have you do in the tutorial. Um, but once you get to sort of a, a filtered selection, or you can actually just filter on assay type directly. Once you get to that, you scroll down. I'm going to have to plug my computer in, but this time I have it next to me. Um, you can scroll down to available file types on the left. So once you get to available file types, you click that and you can see that there's like 25 high C files apparently here. Um, so you click that and now you've got different ways to look at, at high C files, different kinds of experiments that have different high C files. So uh, we can look at H, the, the RP, RP1 experiment, for example. You scroll down, you see this experiment summary, it's telling you all this information about the biosample, external resources, it's telling you um, about the replicates, they have this neat thing, this association graph, which shows you the information about the software that was used to process this experiment. And now here you have, the, these are the high C files, mapping quality thresholded and just the regular chromatin interactions. Now, if you go to the tab file details, so it's all the way on to the right, you can actually see that there's this visualize button and you'll see if you scroll down, what can you visualize? You can visualize these two. So they're already selected for you. You can unselect if you want, but you can just keep them selected and then you can click visualize, visualize and it will bring up the two files and you can look at them side by side. Now these are not very different, okay, because these are just uh, two versions of the same high C map, one in which it was, uh, one in which it was uh, mapping quality thresholded uh, just above zero at one, so it just has no repeats, and then one in which it's uh, it's at um, 30. And I can tell which one is 30 versus which one is one because um, when things are uh, sort of badly aligned, there's a uh, there's uh, a lot more sort of off diagonal um, misalignments. You can sort of see these jackpotting things that are happening. So that's, that's the difference between these. What I'd really like them to do, so you can visualize directly um, anytime you're exploring, if you're excited about some experiment, you see that there's high C files on the ENCODE project, you can just click the visualize button and it'll bring up a juice box. And then once again, if you wanted to say add some more, like a third, fourth panel down here and load a different map to compare, you could do so. So that's just to show you that nice little feature. What I would like them to do, which I, am, I, I don't think we've done yet, they ha also have this nice feature, this um, shopping cart feature. So like I can take these and put them into a shopping cart, like these are selected and I can put them into my shopping cart. And if I go to my shopping cart, I can see that, these data sets. But I would really like to be able to um, see, it doesn't think that I can visualize it. I would really like to be able to visualize from the shopping cart because um, often there's, often there's like, I'm gonna add, now I'm gonna go to a different experiment and I'm gonna add a different experiment to my shopping cart and then I wanna, I wanna be able to just select them all in the shopping cart and then click the visualize button. So this is, uh, but this feature is really great by the way. It's also great for if you just want raw data files, you can also put a whole bunch of different experimental 
raw data files into your shopping cart and then download them all at the same time instead of having to download each one separately and then go back and explore. All right. Are there any questions about that? I have one question, general one, about the replicates. Uh-huh. Like, uh, maybe you said it, but I must have missed it. Uh, is there a way to combine replicates in the same map? No. Well, um, Mohammed, are you there? I'm not sure, I don't, there's a, a way to do it in Juicebox desktop. I'm not sure about Juicebox on the web. Yeah, sorry, can you repeat the question, sorry? Can you combine replicates within Juicebox on the web? Yeah, on the web, I don't believe that's supported. In Juicebox desktop, you can do it by selecting multiple from the selection option, but yeah, I, I, I don't believe the web supports that option. And yeah, okay, so it's like an average of the replicates, the thing that it does, or? And in the juice box desktop situation, it'll sum them. So it'll give you the sum of the results, but it doesn't, it doesn't try to renormalize it. So what we generally recommend is it's useful for a quick view. If you have, um, um, if you want to sum a bunch of replicates, you can quickly sum them and uh, get, a, get a rough idea of what's going on. But to, if you want to do actual analysis on it, it's best to actually uh, take them and combine them. So Juicer has a script, a mega.sh script, which will basically uh, combine replicates into a mega map. Um, that would be more preferable for actual detailed analysis. But if you're just looking really quickly and trying to sum a couple of maps together, then the desktop version will do that. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just showing you this this easy way to do it. But like in the Juicebox desktop version, you can you can do multiple selection. So I could select three replicates here and open them, and it'll just sum them. As Mohammed said, um, the problem is the normalization. Um, and you, you just can't, it, it, it's, it's incorrectly normalized in that case, if you try to use normalization. So we do suggest, um, this is taking a real long time. <laughs> That's one of the reasons yeah. it's better to do two tutorial with these boxes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, one of the things that's up. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Go on. I was just gonna say, yeah, as go you ahead. were saying, um, yeah, so a uh, de desktop version will normalize, specifically it'll normalize each map individually rather than this, taking the total sum and then normalizing. That's the... And so when it sums them, it sums these normalized values, but it's not mathematically correct what it's doing. It's probably like, it's not that bad either, but it's not correct. You can see up here in the, in the title bar, it tells you that these are the, the maps that are summed together. So high CO1, high CO2, high CO3 are summed together. And then you could go ahead and, and, and change your normalization, maybe. No, it's not even letting me do that. Maybe it's because we're on the genome wide view. Well, in any event, I'm gonna I'm gonna exit out of this because I okay. I didn't yeah, necessarily want to show you this topic. <laughs> but I do. Um, it's a reasonable thing to to want to do, um, and we are developing um, more. It's a reasonable thing to want to do. I mean, that's why we have a mega script that does it. Um, and because we do it all the time, we send replicates all the time. Um, we we have a new normalization algorithm that we're hoping that's it's also a balancing algorithm, but it's much faster that we're hoping to um, to include. But I'm still not sure that we would able to be be able to do sort of like real time summing of the maps. It's certainly something that we could we could think about. It's just not possible to take like mathematically. It's not there's not a good way to transform the normalized values uh, into some normalized values. So it, it's actually like kind of an interesting problem that we, we could think about more, but we, but we haven't tried to do it yet. Um, the one thing that we could potentially add as a feature would be to have the sum maps and then do on the fly normalization. Um, I don't know if, we're quite fast enough to do that, but um, but the fast code we have is pretty fast, so maybe we could do that. All yeah, right, it would still only be a desktop type feature. It wouldn't be something that we could normalize on the on the, on the web. You don't think so? I guess not, because we don't but, we don't we have a, limit, a RAM limit there. I think maybe yeah. for the lowest resolutions, but not for the for the deeper resolutions, like five KB or something. Yeah, that makes sense. 